Today we're going to talk about water pollution and the human impact. In this presentation you'll learn about two types of pollution, point source and non-point source pollution, as well as four types of pollution, bacterial, nutrient, toxic, and sediment. So if you're taking your notes with this, feel free to pause it as often as you need to, and let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with just a very general definition of pollution. Pollution can be defined as any substance that causes an undesirable change in the environment caused by human activities. What do we mean by undesirable? We mean a change that's unwanted. We can break pollution down into two different types, point source pollution and non-point source pollution. Point source pollution is easy to point out. It comes from a single known place. So if you look at this picture here, we see the smoke. We don't have to guess where it's coming from. We know it's coming from the smokestack, which belongs to that factory. Some examples of point source pollution would be factories, pipe, if you saw something coming out of it, a sewage outlet, a smokestack, or an oil spill. In all of these cases, you can point out the source of that pollution. Non-point source pollution is the opposite. It comes from a source that's not easy to identify. If you take a look at this picture, we notice that the person in the picture is picking up trash. That plastic bottle on the ground, we have no idea where it came from. We don't know who dropped it or when they dropped it. Therefore, we don't know the source of that pollution. It's non-point source. Runoff from agriculture and trash are two examples that are often considered when we talk about non-point source pollution. For example, if we see trash floating in a stream, we don't know where it came from. If you're um, taking water samples in a stream and maybe you notice that the nitrates and phosphates are high, you could infer that it was runoff from agriculture. We don't know that for sure though. Perhaps the levels could be high because a farmer had just fertilized his fields and perhaps some of it rained and washed off. Maybe the waste from the animals wasn't being properly treated and got um, washed into a water source. So we don't know exactly where that came from. So let's take a second on your paper, go ahead and pause it, and you're going to read each of the six examples and decide if it's point or non-point pollution. When you're finished, go ahead and unpause it and we'll check your answers. Number one, you notice smoke coming from the smokestack at a local factory. Point pollution. Number two, there's a puddle with oil in the grocery store parking lot. Non-point pollution, because we don't know where the oil came from. Number three, at the park, there's trash on the ground. Non-point pollution. Now, the exception to this would be if you watch someone litter. That would be point pollution. Number four, after a rainstorm, there's dirty water running along the street in town. That's non-point pollution again because we don't know the source of that water. Number five, thick smoke is coming out of the exhaust pipe of a car on the highway. That's point pollution. We can see exactly where that pollution source is coming from. Number six, the pipe cracked and oil spilled onto the land. That's point pollution. So I have a question for you. Which type of pollution do you think is worse, point or non-point? And explain why. Pause it, take a second, and jot your answer down on your note sheet. When you're ready, go ahead and unpause it. Okay, so I'm guessing that you said that non-point source pollution is worse. And if you said that, you're correct. The problem is that non-point solution pollution, we don't know where the pollution originated from. It'd be really hard to stop if we don't know where the source is. Well, now we're going to talk about four types of pollutants, sediment, toxic, bacterial, and nutrient. The first type that we're going to look at is sediment pollution. Sediment pollution is evident in this picture right here. You can see the brown part of the water seeping into the lake. Dirt, minerals, and sand erode from the land and wash into the water. There's several sources of sediment pollution. For example, you could have a construction site Perhaps that construction site is digging up dirt and maybe they don't use a silt fence correctly. 
So imagine that they get a really hard rain and that dirt washes away, washes into the streets, into the sewers, and gets into our water supply. Another example that's very common is riverbank erosion. If you ever notice along a riverbank or a stream, often there's native plants and vegetation growing. That slows down the water from entering the stream and also helps to filter out pollutants. Now imagine this, that the side of the river is not covered with any vegetation. No, no bushes, no grasses. If we get a hard rainstorm, that's going to cause that, um, that dirt side of your river to wash in and cause to erode and to cause sediment pollution. Mining and logging are also sources of sediment pollution. When you're cutting down trees and digging up the land, that lets the dirt to be loose and open for erosion. Sediment pollution doesn't seem like it would be such a big problem, but there's several problems with it. Number one, it blocks the sunlight that reaches underwater plants that provide the food and oxygen for animals. The sediments can get stuck in the gills of fish and crabs and clog them. And sediment can also bury fish and insects eggs and prevent them from hatching. Toxic chemicals are another pollutant source. Chemicals that kill and poison and kill organisms in and near streams and lakes are toxic. There's lots of sources of toxic pollutants. Some would be pesticides, gasoline and oil, maybe leaking from your car, household cleaning products could be toxic, paint, especially if it contains lead, and industrial waste chemicals. These can poison organisms, they can kill organisms, they can poison humans, so it's very careful that we look at where we're disposing of these chemicals. Bacterial pollution is our third type. That excess bacteria in the water can lead to sickness and disease for organisms that live and drink and swim in the water. Have you ever noticed a sign like this where it says that the lake is not good for swimming? Sometimes there's a high amount of E. coli in it during certain times of the year. Bacterial pollution can come from several different sources. Number one, overflow from a sewage treatment plant. Perhaps it has more houses than it can take care of. Perhaps maybe it has had very, very heavy rain, rains and can't process all of the water at one time. Septic systems that aren't properly maintained can leak, and that can leak out bacterial um, pollution into the groundwater. Animal manure could be just from your pet, could be from large farms that maybe don't properly um, manage their waste could be from animals that are for example cows that maybe get into the river discharge from boat toilets so those are all examples of bacterial pollution the last type we're going to look at is nutrient pollution too many nutrients usually nitrogen and phosphorus enter the water and cause something called an algal bloom if you look at the picture here you'll notice the the green on top of the water that's not grass that's algae um, nutrients are a great thing, but too many nutrients can cause problems. So think about it as kind of like you're fertilizing the water. You don't want to add so many nutrients to the water that causes the algae to grow and to bloom and to spread and overtake the water. This can be a problem because when the algae dies and some of the other plants die, the decomposers that break them up use all of the available oxygen in the water. Well, we know that other organisms need oxygen to survive, for example, the fish. So they cannot survive. Some sources of nutrient pollution could be things like fertilizer, putting too much fertilizer on, fertilizer on your grass, um, manure, again, discharge from boat toilets, and household detergents. There's a word that I want you to be familiar with, and it's eutrophication. Eutrophication is basically the process where water bodies receive excess nutrients that stimulate excessive plant growth. So remember, access to clean water is vital to humans as well as other organisms. 
Water pollution is a known threat to humans, and we need to do our part in keeping our waters clean.